these are from the site that we surveyed today. When you find nettles, you usually find an archaeological site. That's like one of the, the plants that like sites. They're better than broccoli. We actually got a lot more than I thought we did. <laughs> but nettles is our favorite. We usually eat it with Spam. <laughs> Most of the sites we're going to show you are village sites. You'll see the big houses with the side rooms and, the, and where people live. In each house would probably, according to Lysiansky, Karlik had 220 people and I think there were 22 houses. It averaged out to 18 people per house. They'd be related through the mother. So there'd be like a group of sisters living in a house, each with their husband. So you'd have like three families in a house. So what have you found so far? Well, I think this is the biggest site on the whole peninsula. Uh -huh. And it extends from here all the way on top of this rock, which is on the um, Shelikov side, uh -huh. all the way over there to the, um, I guess you'd call that the Iulik Peninsula side. Yeah. So, and we kind Palatac of- Bay, yeah. 78 house pits. They look like they're all about 1,280. They're a lot like what we found at Olga Lakes. Uh -huh. Transitional houses. Oh, cool. They all look like they have roof sods. Maybe side rooms, pits. Uh -huh. They look like cluster houses. And I'll show you, show you one over here in a minute. All right. The hearths are all we're digging test pits for. And that's why we probe sometimes with, with, with the ski pole to find the rocks. Because all we're doing test pits for is to date these villages. Because we want to get the um, age of these villages and then hopefully we'll be able to, by association, test to age the petroglyphs. Because if the only villages near the petroglyphs are 800 years old, that means the petroglyphs are probably 800 years old. Because the petroglyphs, being on rock, you, there's nothing to date. Everybody calls you Barabras, and Lydia Black used to get mad at me for that. Oh yeah, she got mad. She says, that's a storage that. pit, that's not, a, it's a house, the Damashti. I think but, Barabra is a Siberian word. Yeah, it, well, I don't know. But Russians call all um, storage pits Barabras. But our real word, Larry Matvey, who grew up over here, called them Chikshoks. He's like, they're not, they're not Barabras, they're Chikshoks. That's a real home, a house in Alutic. So kind of a mess. <laughs> but yeah, this is what we did all day yesterday. We made this map uh -huh. of all the house pits. I think we found 78 house pits out in this area here. Um, and now the next stage is to test them mm -hmm. to get charcoal so we can date the, how old they are okay. and maybe find some diagnostic artifacts. Oh, cool. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> and then we have your petroglyph clusters. Yeah, There's so petroglyph that's... eight, yeah. seven, nine, six. Yeah. Cool. In late prehistoric houses, there'd be, um, you'd have a main room, it's sort of like a common room, and then you'd have side rooms where each family lived. And these are the oldest multi-roomed houses found on Kodiak, and they're not very big. They're probably one family still lived in it, but for some reason or another, they're starting to add side rooms. Uh, Amy thinks for storage and it's economic reasons. But anyway, you can sort of see the, it's a three meter by three meter square, might have had a tunnel, going entrance tunnel and you can see pits like here's a here's a pretty good pit over here and this is probably attached but the the sod that they capped it with is so thick that you can't see a depression anymore uh, connecting it so here's the little side room and I cannot imagine a family living in this room because it's probably only a two by two or less two meters by two meters you'd be surprised Patrick we'll have to debate about the um, the side pits because you know, families live together. We had, my grandmother had, uh, what, 19 kids in a two-bedroom house? Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> a lot of the kids that actually, if they had big families, they would go and live with other families, the ones that didn't have kids. I have the notebook from when we excavated one of these houses. This is the main house? Yep. And then the multi-rooms? Yeah. And then when we finished excavating it, it looked like that right there. Look how big that is. It's, they're tiny. They're only, they're a meter and a half. Now this is a spot. This is a house this pit. This is a house pit. It's a nice one up here. Now this one's cool. Look at these two, side Holy by side. They're probably Holy. connected. Wow. We, all, we were huge. thinking about mapping them as one. No. Because they're probably connected. But we you can see where they might have been connected right there. Don't and this you? one looks like it might have had a hearth. It's a hole in the middle of the floor. And, and that's usually the hearth. And if 
you can kink on the side sometimes you can hit the rock the hearth that's the focus of the house where you cook light everything and it's actually interesting if you go to really old Alutic houses 7,000 years ago they don't really have a hearth and if you think the reason why is because there's no driftwood the trees weren't built up yet and there you, we find these boat shaped lamps and they have wicks all along the edges and that's because they use the the whale oil or the seal oil to both cook heat and light in later prehistoric houses like this house they would have used the hearth because they had a lot of wood so you'd you'd do all your cooking and heating with this and then the oil lamps have only one little wick spot because they're only using them for light we waste a lot of wood today we don't think about how we burn wood because it seems so common but in the past when you don't have much you you make a little bit of wood go a long ways. Actually, if you think about it, even when they were using those little boat-shaped lamps with the long wicks, it was really warm on Kodiak. It was actually warmer than today, I think. You think? Uh, yeah, that's 7,000 years ago? Yeah, yeah, and then it got cold about four. About four, yeah. Okay, and that's engine. actually out there, we found what we think are what we call early catchback. There are 4,000-year-old sites. Uh -huh. yeah. And that's when it, I think times were pretty hard on Kodiak. It was cold, it was the cold. Food's people disappearing. didn't move around as much, I don't figure. Yeah, and they started and to fish like crazy and, yeah. and smoke fish mm -hmm. and, and uh, really focus on fish and salmon. But didn't the population on Kodiak increase then too? That's when it increased, yep. Yeah. During the salmon, when salmon started showing up. Well, yeah, because before that, people were just sort of moving from resource to resource. But they did that anyways, even during the Kodiak period. But they had a focused village too. By yeah, then. winter village. Yeah, and once you have a winter village and you're storing your food, it makes sense to have more people to catch the fish. Yeah. You know, so then all of a sudden, population goes through the roof. Yeah. I'm five feet, 10 inches. And the, the rod right now is uh, just over showing four, four meters. It's like five meters, 20. I like to keep the rod as low as we need it just because I don't want the wind to catch it. Because one, it's, it's a bear to handle and two, we'll break the rod. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm standing, trying to give Patrick the center of the house. But when he draws the map, he'll have an exact point and where the house is located. My map is a jumbled mess. But once we shoot all these points with the transit in relation to the datums, 75? Yeah. I'll be able to draw the edge of the rock. Because he'll go around, bump, 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 bump. And then I'll, from, I get the angle and the distance, and we're good. Then I'll get the top of the wall, and then the natural surface of the uh, ground around the house. And then people would build a house, and they'd stack sods. So we want to get the height of the wall, or the height of the stacking episode. Top. And then we want to compare that with the natural soil surface so we can get an idea of Good. you know what sort of a depression it is and what sort of house it is because we tell a lot uh, about ages okay. of house by the construction that we see visible when we're just on a walking survey. This is a much more recent site. You can see that it's much more lush vegetation, a lot more pushki, nettles, and salmonberry. And this is actually the midden that's coming out of the house. There's a house right above here, and this is where they're throwing their trash. And here is the house where all that stuff came from. And this is a multi-roomed house. And it, now you can see it's much more clear. See how it's square with the high walls? Because they're stacking the sods on the side of the house, not the top. So there are no roof sods. And like, here's a little side room. And you see how it's depression here? This is a tunnel, a coal trap tunnel. And this is a, a family room right here. Maybe 18 people would live in this house on average, according to Lisiansky. So a whole family, this is their side room. And there might be another family in another one of these side rooms over here, or a banya. We know there's probably a, a sweat bath room here too, because we found all that sweat bath rubble. But you can also see the hearth. See here, the hearth is really clear. See how there's sort of a square depression in the middle? And I can even see the rock right here. There's a rock, 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 rock. This is the hearth. And there's no dirt on top of it because the roof was thatched. And, uh, and here's another little side room right in here, smaller. And then there's another one right here. I'm crawling up into the tunnel right in here. This is a much more recent site. You can see that. And as Sven said, you could probably put a family in here. And yeah, you'd fit your little family in here and everybody would snuggle up tight and you'd be really warm. And you know why you need to be warm here because there's pretty bad storms. And then here's the last side room for this house right here. 
So it's one, two, three, big one. And then the fronts, the fronts often don't have a big built up wall. And then uh, that might have been a side room, but I'm not sure. Bears dig in a lot of these houses and kind of mess it up a bit. But this is a pretty clear multi-roomed house. Okay, you start, do them in order. I'm going to turn the radio on. I don't have mine. Oh, you don't? No. Okay, I'll turn it off then. I'm going to cover it up because it's going to rain and our transit is not waterproof. We discovered that once. Yeah. <laughs> the hard way. <laughs> I almost wonder if I should cover it like that. It's going to blow off. That was going to And by the way, this is what we've been eating. These are the nettles. And these grow on the sites. You only find these in the more recent sites, we have really lush vegetation. And they're pretty good, actually. <laughs> I feel so weird. <laughs>